Plan to forgive some student debt and a big push after the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade motivated voters in a highly contested New York special election. But there are still plenty of hurdles to overcome. Friend of the show, Democratic strategist Kevin Walling here in studio. Up late with me tonight on The Final Five. Welcome back in. Hey, Jim. Good to see you. OK, so look, uh, you, you know, the ups and downs at all. It comes with every administration. President Biden's poll numbers were, were pretty low. They, they are still pretty low at this point, showing a bit of an uptick. But, but do you feel momentum on your side now? I absolutely do. We're at 44 percent, so we're beating where Obama was, Clinton was, Trump was, and even Reagan was at this point in their administration. So it's looking pretty good, all firing on all cylinders, now 70 days out from the mid midterms. What do you look right now as the biggest achievement here? Because uh, infrastructure, there were, there, was, there were pushes to do that under Trump. Didn't happen. It happened. Uh, we talk about the Inflation Reduction Act, whatever you want to call it, the different components there. That passed here. There are a lot of things to hang the hats on that I'm sure the Democrats Democrats would like to go to their voters and say, this is why we should have the House, this is why we should have the Senate. What's the big signature you see right there? Yeah, I think it's twofold. Number one, I think it's infrastructure, as you rightly point out. President Trump tried to do this, and we were successful with a bipartisan majority to do that. The administration is out there touting all the benefits as we do these ground breakings, ribbon cuttings, mm -hmm. things like that with our cabinet secretaries. So that's a big deal. And I think one of the under the radar victories has been the, the gun control uh, work that we did also in a bipartisan fashion. The president was in Wilkes-Barre, your home state of Pennsylvania today, touting yeah. all of the work the administration is doing to reduce uh, violence, tackling uh, uh, guns on the streets, and that is a key component of that for sure. We know that's obviously going to come up a lot, too, as we go towards the midterms, but, it, but the, the political environment, I think back to after, I mean, you look in the in the early 2010s, where states like Colorado had worked hard, they, they had enacted some gun legislation, and that resulted in Democrats losing some ground there. The national environment seems to have changed on that front, too. It really has. It, it has shifted. And you saw the president talking about that today, still pushing for an assault weapons ban uh, that he wasn't able to get as part mm -hmm. of this package, something that he was able to pass in 1994 that we're going to still work on. And that's a key thing that Democrats can campaign on because the majority of Americans, including majority of independents and more moderates, support that kind of work. By the way, it's funny you mention that because the first time I was ever in Congress, true story, 1994, here for an eighth grade field trip. Our congressman, a we guy. We gotta get name, photos of this. Where uh, are there, the there, photos? There, somewhere, somewhere there is out there, but yeah. our congressman, a guy by the name of Rick Santorum. I uh, know the name. I figured, <laughs> I figured you'd be a big fan. Pittsburgh I, I, zone. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. But it was during that, during the crime, uh, the crime bill debate back in 1994 and, and really following that. And it's just, it's funny to see just how much has changed, not just nationally, but in my life as well, going back to 1994. That's another story for another day. Let's talk about, uh, President Biden's gonna speak tomorrow night, yes. uh, Thursday night, Thursday rather. Thursday night. Thursday night, going to speak. And what do you want to hear from him? It seems like they want to discuss democracy, the soul of the nation. That seems to be a theme that he has brought through from the presidential campaign to now. It really is. And listen, I was with him in Philadelphia when he announced the campaign, pledging to restore the soul of the nation. That was a key component of his uh, whole, uh, the reason behind uh, his campaign. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to see the president return to that uh, key component, uh, going to really uh, strike a chord in terms of his support for democracy. Not not just in this country, but around the world. And of course, to quote him, not comparing him to the almighty, comparing him to the alternative, he's going to make the real case of where we're seeing this anti-democratic uh, kind of uh, maneuvers on the Republican side, especially with Donald Trump. When you talk about that, you know, there have been people, many people, uh, primarily on the right, but some center, maybe even on the left, that, that are questioning the rhetoric that the president used when he called, called Republicans, at least some of them, semi-fascists. Yeah. It's a good question. Listen, I have a piece out uh, that's going to come out uh, in on FoxNews.com about this very issue, mm -hmm. uh, because I think the problem is when we paint everyone with a broad brush, and I think that's what has come of that, that everyone thinks that the MAGA movement itself is a semi-fascist. I think what the president needs to do on Thursday night is to make the case that what Donald Trump and his enablers have done in Congress and in these state legislatures, that's where the anti-democratic fascist movement is, not with the people themselves, the 74 million people that voted for Donald Trump. They're patriots. And we got to win it back to our side. You know, one person that is, that is facing the voters in a couple of months is Mark Kelly out of Arizona. And he took some flack because he had said, hey, look, I work with Republicans and we disagree on things, but I find many of them good people. He, I'm paraphrasing here. Yeah. But sort of praise the fact that, and I believe that, I think most people in some way, shape or form, there are good people. There are good people out there that want to do right by their country. When people lash out at somebody like Mark Kelly for saying, I reach across the lines, I find some goodness on the other side, I, I, do, you, do you find that a bit overreaction? 
hundred percent. Mark Kelly's only going to get praise from me for that. Uh, you know this uh, uh, as well. I'm in a bipartisan relationship. I I'm dating a guy who's a Republican, <laughs> so I'm all about finding you know country over party. Yeah. And the grief I would get when I and I do attack Republicans up, down, left, and center. But again, at the end of the day, we got to remember we're all uh, Americans, as Mark Kelly does, and that we need to get things done for the American people. All right. So between now, we got Labor Day coming around. We're going to have the Labor Day parades. You're going to have a, a lot of get-togethers. You're going to have really the the midterm hit a fever pitch as we get into November. What what do you see happening between now and then? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of hot button issues out there that are going to be addressed in many of these state races. Uh, what do you what do you see happening? In it really comes ball? down to, to what you said at the outset, uh, uh, Jim, in terms of the, the Dobbs decision on Roe. Mm -hmm. We're seeing women uh, in massive numbers register for the first time in some of these key states. That is going to be a critical issue. You mentioned the New York uh, special election where yeah. we saw that overperform. I think that is going to be a key thing heading into November. You're also going to see the president hit the trail. He was obviously in Maryland just up the road uh, last week uh, when he made those comments. Yeah. He's going to hit the road for our candidates now who want to see the president campaigning with them. And, and that really didn't seem like it was going in that direction where a lot of these Democratic candidates would say, hey, we appreciate the support, but you can stay home. Now they want Marine, uh, the Air Force One, Marine One coming to town. They want that that uh, moment. Uh, you saw John Fetterman, uh, you know, our, yeah. our candidates up in Pennsylvania uh, embracing him. You're going to see it in Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, all over the case. Devin Walling, Good to see have you a great too. holiday weekend. Good yeah, to see you as too. always. And the final five is back after this. Hi.